Okay, Ridge of Black Ray Pond, starting on one page 115, we'll get to page 120. <coughs> it was backed by silver, silver filigree, underlaid with red satin, and it had a small silver handle. She had never really used it. She remembered how she had, she had astonished the visitors by reading every little st letter straight off, but she had cherished the gift for its delicate craftsmanship. What a pity every child couldn't learn to read under a willow tree, Kit thought out a week later. She and Prudence sat on the cold, cool grassy carpet. A pale green curtain of branches just brushed the grass and threw a filigree over shadows as delicate as the wrought silver on the child's face. This was the third lesson. At first, Prudence had, spe had been speechless. In all her sorts, short life the child had seldom seen and certainly never held in her hands anything so lovely as the exquisite little silver horn book <coughs> for long moments she had been two days to realize that the tiny alphabet, alphabet fastened to it was made up of the same a's b's and a b's that she had overheard through the door school doorway but now by this third meeting she was drinking in the precious letters so speedily that kit knew she must soon find a primer as well tis getting late prudence i don't want you to get into trouble and i must go back too the child sighed and held the horn book obediently this is your that is yours prudence i meant it for a present for you she'd never let me have it the little girl said regretfully you'll have to keep it for me kit made a decision she had been walking an excuse to take prudence to hannah she felt a feeling that the child needed that comforting refuge even more than she did herself i know what we'll do she suggested we'll leave the book here with hannah then any time you want to you can use it you can use it any time you want to use it you can come and get it from her terror blanched the child's face prudence listen to me you're afraid of hannah because you don't know her and because you've heard things just that just aren't true she'll cut off my nose if i go there near her kit laughed and took the child's hands in her own and spoke as earnestly as she knew how you trust me don't you <coughs> the small head nodded solemnly then come with me and see for yourself i promise you on my honor nothing will hurt you the bony hand in her hers was trembling as they walked down the path, grassy path but prudence stepped resolutely beside her kit's heart ached suddenly with pity and gratitude at such trust i've brought another rebel to visit you she announced as hannah took him to the door hannah's pale eyes twinkled what a wonderful day she exclaimed four new kittens and now visitors came and come and see under a corner of the cabin on a pile of soft grass the great yellow cat curled protectively around tiny balls of fluff her topaz eyes glowed at them and her purr was boastful completely disarmed prudence went down on her knees oh the dear little thing she whispered reaching one fervent finger two black ones and one striped and one yellow one over her head kit and hannah smiled if thee is very very careful thee can pick one up and hold it hannah told her with a black kitten cradled in her hands prudence watched them say find a safe corner for the hornbrook thee is welcome any time child i'll keep it safe for thee now show me what thee has learned today what letter is this in the clean white sand on the floor hannah traced a careful b looking at prudence kit held her breath but there was no trace of fear in those fawn-like eyes as hannah told held out the stick boldly prudence reached to take it in her own hand and carefully and proudly she traced the lines herself i believe there must be a morsel of blueberry cake for such a smart pupil praised hannah the morsel of cake vanished in a twinkling hannah's magic cure for every ill nat had said blueberries cake and a kitten kit smiled to see it working its charm on prudence but there was an invisible ingredient that made the cure unfailing the bible name for it was love why do they say she's a witch prudence demanded as the two walked slowly back along the path because they have never tried to get to know her people are afraid of things they don't understand and you won't you won't be afraid of her now will you you will go to see her when you can even if i'm not there the child considered yes she said finally i'm going back first chance i can not just because the horn is there i think hannah is lonesome of course she has a cat to talk to but don't you think sometimes 
She must want somebody to answer back. Watching Prudence scurry off toward home, Kit had a moment's misgiving. As always, she had acted on impulse, never stopping to weigh the consequences. Now too late, she began to wonder, had it been fair to draw Prudence into her secret world? She felt completely justified in deceiving her aunt and uncle. They were now reminded and mistaken, but the thought of Goodwife Cruff made her shudder. Yet Prudence had looked so miserable. She needed a friend. For a few hours, those weary, anxious eyes had been filled with shining trust and happiness. Wasn't that worth a little risk? She shook off her qualms and set her face towards home and another dull evening. William could talk of nothing but his house these days. Every evening he must report exactly which trees he had been cut, which boards fashioned. Today he reported as the family moved inside to escape the twilight mist that rose from the river. He had overseen the carpenter who was splitting the white oak before the clip clapboards. I don't think I made any mistake in deciding on a river in oaks, he told them. Of course, two shillings a day is high for a carpenter, but sometimes Kit wanted to stop her ears. Would she have to hear the price of every nail? that went into the boards, and every single nail the finest that money could buy. <clears throat> she was tired of the house already before the first board was in place. Judith, however, took a lively interest in such details. She had a flair for line and form and a definite mind of her own, and it was plain to Kit, at least, that William planned his house. Judith was co comparing it timber for timber with the house she dreamed for herself. Her purpose was only to apparent as she made adroit attempts to draw John Holbrook into the discussion. I think you should have one of those new roofs, William, she said now. Gambrell, they call them, like the new house on the road to Hartford. I think they look so distinguished, don't you, John? Mercy laughed at John's bewilderment. I don't believe John even notices there's a roof over his head, she teased gently, unless the rain happens to leak through onto his nose. And then he'd just pick up his book and move somewhere else, added Kit. William, do not smile. He was considering the matter gravely. Perhaps you're right, Judith went. When I ride down Hartford Way tomorrow, I'll just take a look at that house. Of course, you never know whether to risk a new style like that. Oh, for heaven's sake. Kid gave her yarn an impatient jerk that sent the ball bouncing across the floor. Too tardily, William bent to catch it and had to get heavily down on his knees to retrieve it from under the settle. Now some men, Kit reflected, could pick up a ball of yarn without looking ridiculous. She thanked him with little grace. It was Mercy, as usual, who quietly steered them into untroubled water. What did you bring to read to us tonight, John? She inquired. Judith, light a pine knot for him to see by. In this one thing, they were all united. John loved to read out loud, and they were equally happy to listen. For all of them, the days were filled with hard labor with little enough to satisfy the hunger of their minds and spirits. The books that John shared with them had opened a window on a larger world. Perhaps each of them, listening, glimpsed listening, glimpsed through that window of a private world unknown to others. Matthew Wood sat scowling, his keen mind challenging and weighing each new thought. Rachel, Kit suspected, welcomed the peace and relaxation of those moments as much as the reading itself. What William thought it was impossible to discern. Kit was wished, often wished that John would read something besides the religious tracts he so admired. But even for her impatient spirits, the beauty of his voice moved a magic spell. Tonight it was poetry. These were written by the woman in Boston, he explained. Anne Bradstreet, wife of the governor of Massachusetts, Dr. Berkeley, feels they are worthy to be compared with the finest poetry of England. That ends on page 120. The 115, the 120 we just said. <sighs>